Okay, so I'm very happy that I had the appropriate hat for this video um, because Matt Boldy had a hat trick last night. Uh, Minnesota Wild rookie. He's only played in 13 or so games here. Let me just make sure. Yeah, 13 games. So he's got with a hat trick last night and the assist. So he had four points last night. Um, seven goals, seven assists in 13 games. So 14 points in 13 games. Uh, six power play points. And he's got 12 blocks, which I thought was pretty interesting as well. Um, so, you know, he might add on add on a few blocks. Um, so that's always nice to see. So he's averaging 2.6 fantasy points per game right now in 13 games, which obviously is pretty good. Um, he's available in 80% of ESPN leagues. So, I mean, the guy looks like a stud right now. Um, so you may want to check him out. Maybe pick him up. Why not? Um, especially, you know, because he could be uh, the guy in Minnesota for quite some time. Obviously, he's got a lot to do. It's only 13 games, but it's pretty good, man. Uh, what else is going on? So Jack Hughes, I don't know why he gets no love. Can you, can you explain that to me? I know he plays for New Jersey. And I know I've brought this up before. But he was the first overall pick, what was it, three years ago, four years ago, something like that? First All-Star game this year. Um, and yet he still gets no love. He's available in 35% of ESPN leagues. He's played in 29 games, 28 points, 13 goals, 15 assists, 94 shots on goal, and averaging 2.1 fantasy points per game, which, interestingly enough, is higher than Patrick Kane. And Patrick Kane is... Averaging 2.0. Obviously, Patrick Kane is Patrick Kane. I'm not saying you should get Jack Hughes before Patrick Kane, but I'm just saying he's on that same level in, in terms of points per game right now that Patrick Kane is. So I'm not so sure why he doesn't get the love that he should. Um, what else is going on? Jesper Bratz, another guy that doesn't seem to get much love. He's available in 62% of ESPN leagues, 14 goals, 29 assists. Now, I know he's out for a little while, but still, he's averaging 1.8 fantasy points per game. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just like a New Jersey thing. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, what else is going on? So, Tony D'Angelo, Carolina. Thought I'd make a note of that. Um, where is he now? I have the have the numbers in front of me. Okay, he's got 30 assists, eight goals in 39 games, um, 15 power play points, 88 shots on goal, 24 hits, 37 blocks. So he's got a decent amount of blocks, which is nice to see. Um, but he's available in 22% of ESPN leagues. He's you know he's rostered in 78%. So I mean that's pretty good. 2.1 fantasy points per game. Um, I kind of like to compare him to, to a Quinn Hughes, and there's a couple other guys I'm going to get to in a minute that I like to compare to Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes is a stud, no question about it. I think he's, what, 22 years old, 23 years old, something like that. He's a stud, no doubt about it. This is not a knock on Quinn Hughes because he's a stud. He's on my fantasy team, stud. 32 assists in 45 games, just two goals, 88 shots on goal, 32 blocks in 45 games, stud, no question. But what's interesting about him is he's rostered 91% of ESPN leagues, 1.6 fantasy points. I know he's awesome. I know he's a great player, especially a great young player. But in terms of just numbers, in terms of just fantasy points, it's 1.6 points total. Okay? D'Angelo is 2.1, just to give you a frame of reference. But it's not, it's not just that. It's... D'Angelo essentially is tied with him in terms of assists. He's tied essentially in power play points because, you know, 17 to 15. They're, they're tied, they're actually tied in, in shots on goal, 88 apiece. But here's where it get, gets interesting. D'Angelo has six more goals, 11 more hits, and five more blocks in six less games. So something to keep in mind. And... When you do some more research, you go even farther than that, 
and I know I've mentioned these guys before, but I got to bring them up. You get guys like a Noah Dobson on the Islanders, Evan Bouchard on the Oilers. Dobson is, man, <laughs> Dobson's good. You know, he's got a, so far, he looks like he's got a seriously bright future ahead of him. He's got seven goals, 12 assists, only 12 assists. You know, it, you can't compare him to Hughes or D'Angelo in terms of assists. But, you know, so he's 19, 19 points in 40 games. Not fantastic, but that's pretty solid. Uh, 99 shots on goal. So he has more shots on goal than, than Hughes or D'Angelo. He's got 47 hits and 87 blocks. And that's where he really shines is the blocks. Um, if you're looking for total fantasy points, he's up to 2.2 fantasy points per game. Beats out D'Angelo and Quinn Hughes. And you hear a lot more about Quinn Hughes than you do Noah Dobson. Noah Dobson's available in 57% of ESPN leagues. 57%. Okay. Quinn Hughes is available in about eight and a half. And Dobson, in terms of just the numbers, is kind of dominating him right now. Whether it continues, who knows, but he's kind of dominating him right now, mainly because of the blocks. I mean, that's really the re It's not even mainly. That is the reason he's dominating him is because of the blocks. But even if you want to look at it in terms of if your league is like a head-to-head -head league, something like that, I think Noah Dobson is still the guy because he does, I mean, he's got 55 more blocks than Quinn Hughes. He's got 34 more um, hits. And again, he's played in five less games. He's got 11 more shots on goal. Now he's, he's going to get beaten power play points, but only by 10, by 20 and assists, but he's got five more goals. So in terms of just the overall numbers, especially if you're a head-to-head -head league, but even if you're not, if you're just a total points league, Noah Dobson's the way to go if you had to pick one. And Evan Bouchard is another guy. He's, he's available in just about 50% of ESPN leagues. He's at 1.9 fantasy points total. But again, he's got 66 blocks, 45 hits, 110 shots on goal, 17 assists, and 9 goals in 46 games. That's another guy that, and he's another, you know, I, to be honest with you, I like drafting or, you know, you know, making trades for younger players just so I can kind of follow their progress. Even if, you know, and I mean, these guys are, you know, obviously doing well, but even if they're not the best, I kind of like just getting the younger guys on my roster just so it kind of helps me follow their progress. I just think it's a fun way to, to, to play fantasy hockey. So obviously you want to win, but, you know, it's just a nice little touch to, to kind of just help follow their progress um, rather than, you know, just whatever numbers are the best because, hey, you never know anyways. Um, but I think Evan Bouchard and Noah Dobson, man, especially when you can com – and the only reason I'm – there's two reasons why I'm comparing him to Quinn Hughes. Number one, um, he's on my team. So that helps. Um, but number two, it's a, it's a guy that is rostered in over 90% of leagues. And he's a stud, no question about it. But he's rostered in over 90% of the leagues. And there's guys that are rostered in half, half the leagues out there that put up better fantasy numbers, just in terms of fantasy numbers, than a guy like a Quinn Hughes that's rostered in over 90% of leagues. And there's plenty of other ones. I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on Hughes. He's just in front of me because he's, he, he's one of the guys on my team. Um, and speaking of just one more that I want to bring up, uh, Braden McNabb is another guy. He's not going to get you the assists and the, and the points. He's, he's got two goals and eight assists. But he's got 102 hits and 120 blocks. He's only got 51 shots on goal. But when you, again, when you do the total points, he's got 1.8 fantasy points per game versus the 1.6 points. And he's available in 67% of ESPN leagues. So in terms of total points, you know, there, there's, especially when you look at blocks, if they're a half point in your league, which I believe in standard leagues they are. Now, if you're in a custom league, obviously it could be different. But 102 hits and 120 blocks, 
I mean, he he's kind of crushing the competition until you look at a guy like, you know, like a Mario Ferraro or something like that, who's got 91 hits and 115 blocks. Um, and then there's a couple other guys. DeHaan, I think, I think Connor Murphy also has a ton of blocks. Like there's a lot of guys that have just a ton of blocks and that's where they get all their points from. But they're a lot more consistent than, you know, having to score goals and, and getting assists. They're a lot more consistent and they get more of them. So I just think blocks and hits are just a stat that, you know, you want to keep an eye on. And shots on goal too, of course. Um, Cause you know, McNabb and Ferraro aren't going to get you the, uh, the shots on goal or the points, but they are going to, you know, make up for it in hits and blocks. So it all depends on how you want to play and, you know, uh, where you feel you're weak. Um, so last but not least, I'm kind of pumped about this because I haven't really seen him play because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really new at, at I'm trying to get back into not only fantasy hockey, but really getting back and, and the following, uh, you know, the hockey seasons in general. Um, learning all the new players, learning all the, not only the new, but the older players as well. And Jack Eichel returns tomorrow, which, which will be Wednesday against Colorado. So I'm super excited about that. I was super happy to see him get traded. I think it was ridiculous what, what Buffalo, uh, said, said he couldn't have the surgery. It's his life, man. And he was only doing what could get him back on the ice, um, quicker and, and hopefully healthier for the long term than what Buffalo wanted him to do in the first place. So I don't understand why Buffalo had to take that hard stance. And I understand he was the guinea pig. He was the very first guy. But then, you know, a couple of weeks later, um, was it a couple of weeks? I, I forget when it was. Maybe it was a month. I forget. But then another guy had the same surgery. And it's going to continue. So, I, I, you know, Buffalo screwed up. Unless you're not a Jack Eichel fan in general, maybe you don't, I mean, who knows, but I just, in terms of, you know, wanting to get that surgery for his own health, it's ridiculous that Buffalo didn't let him, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, and listen, he's on a better team, obviously, anyway, so he's on Vegas, um, and I know there's there's a lot of people that don't like Vegas. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, so I got to do a little more research and figure out why the heck Vegas is just, you know, why, why people just hate Vegas as much as they do. Um, but anyway, so I, I'm super excited to see him play against Colorado. That's going to be a tough game against Colorado, but um, hopefully everybody scores a lot of goals and it'll be a fun game to watch. And uh, so, yeah, super excited about that. And uh, I think I'll end it there. Um, hope you, hope you liked the video um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.